If you want to tangle with fickle, hard to hook trout, you need to be pulling soft plastic grubs. If you want to get into grub trolling, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com and grab one of Kel Kellogg's signature series grub kits today and you'll be yelling fish on tomorrow. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. I had some fun this morning. I was experimenting with gear and I'll show you what I came up with in a second and uh, it's pretty dang cool. But first, let's talk a little bit about experimentation and fishing. Um, to me, at, at you know, when, when you're up here, when you're an upper level angler or even a medium level angler, experimentation with gear is one of the keys to your growth as a fisherman. It's the way that new baits are developed. It's a way that new lures, you know, begin to be used. It's a way that lures that had been being used start to be used in different ways. Proven baits can often be used in different ways. Look no further, you know, than the bass world and the development of the Ned rig. That rig was developed absolutely by accident and it is absolutely the craze rig right now. If you want to go out and catch numbers of bass, the Ned rig is an awesome way to go and it was developed completely by accident out on the water, out of necessity. A guy put it, the first Ned rig together and uh, guess what? He caught a bunch of bass and now everybody's using it. If you know me, you know I spent a lot of time fishing all over the western United States from Puerto Vallarta to the you know, Gulf of Alaska, back to Yellowstone, everywhere in between. And I've been exposed to a lot of different situations and a lot of different baits. I try to you know, um, put a lot of my saltwater knowledge to use when I'm, when I'm chasing trout and landlocked salmon because a lot of those saltwater techniques absolutely have applications in our freshwater lakes and reservoirs. You have to downsize the gear, but the philosophy is the same. So recently I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube. I've been watching bass guys throw those big old, you know, Alabama rigs, the, the, the rigs that have a bunch of blades and a bunch of soft bodies. It looks like a whole school of shad. Well, I've kind of combined that thought with what I've seen many times in the Sea of Cortez and other blue water destinations where we'll be out, we'll be trolling for Dorado and we might have something like a, like a tuna jet on the end of the leader, but above that, we've got a series of hoochies and a lot of times that big tuna jet, it'll draw in a Dorado. He won't hit the larger lure, but he'll grab one of those hoochies and if you've never eaten Dorado, man, you're, you're missing out. They are, they are one of the apex species in terms of table fare. They are yummy. So we are always looking to catch a bonus Dorado or, or three. So, cause they're just, they're just phenomenal table fare. But I've combined those kind of two ideas, the Alabama rig and that saltwater hoochie rig. And I've come up with what I call a swarm rig. I was reeling in a trout the other day at Collins Lake. He had two other trout with him. And I said to myself, man, if I had the right rig, I probably could have caught, you know, or hooked another one of those fish. Maybe I would have hooked both of the other fish. I could have landed three trout at one time because, you know, I'm legally allowed to use three hooks. So with all that in mind, I grabbed the spool of 12 pound test fluorocarbon line and I started tying knots. And this is what I came up with. And I'm going to test this this weekend and I will share the results with you guys here on YouTube. I might have to tweak this rig a little bit, but I know this is going to work. So let me unfurl this from my, my pool floaty here. It's going to take me a second because I've got hooks all over the place. Once I get it all unfurled, we will, uh, we will talk tactics. We'll talk about what I got and what I expect it to do. So this leader is about five and a half feet long. Oh, oh there we go. Don't let it get tangled up. This leader is about five and a half feet long. And let me take you from the top end here. Up top, this is 12 pound fluorocarbon, as I said. Up top, I have a loop, just a loop. That is where I am gonna connect to my main line. I'm gonna run this off a downrigger. So that's where I'm gonna connect to my main line. Down about a foot, I've, tried, I've tied in a dropper loop, just like you would find on a shrimp fly rig. I attached a hook to the dropper right there. And on that hook, I have put a three inch FHS trout grub. I come down about 14 inches, another dropper, another straight shanked number four hook, and another three inch FHS grub. 
So I've got those two grubs snelled on droppers ready to fish. Now I come down another about 16 inches and I have a mini willow leaf dodger and then about 14 inches behind that dodger I have my final hook. In this case, I have a red slow death hook and I have an FHS three inch firecracker grub on there. Now, I put this dodger in the mix for two reasons. One, I want something to draw fish into the rig, but two, I know that those grubs are gonna spin in the water and I think that dodger is gonna give me just enough resistance to keep everything straight going through the water column and it's gonna prevent everything from kind of getting tangled up when these grubs start twisting and turning and swimming through the water. So my theory is, is that that dodger, that mini willow leaf is gonna draw fish into the spread. They're gonna grab one of these grubs and get hooked and if they have a friend or friends with them, I'm gonna hook one of those fish too. We'll see what happens. I am very confident that this rig is going to work. I might have to tweak some of the, the attachments, but that is my, uh, my current experiment right there. I'm a mad scientist. That's what I came up with in the fishing lab, lab this morning. I can't wait to get out on the water and try it. I'm definitely going to have to feather it back behind the boat. Everything's going to have to go out straight. I'm not going to be able to just free spool it and drop everything on top of itself because it will get tangled up but I'm hoping to replicate the results that I see when I'm out trolling for Dorado, replicate the results I see when those black bass guys are out there throwing those A-rigs that looks like a whole swarm of bait fish. And that's exactly what I'm trying to mimic here. I'm trying to mimic the flash and sound of a feeding fish surrounded by bait fish. I'm gonna be fishing at Collins Lake. Collins Lake is absolutely full of threadfin shad and uh, I'm hoping I'm gonna pull in three or four trout at one time. Um, they are going to be thinking shad school. They're going to start seeing those little swimming baits and guys are going to start getting hooked and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. So I'm going to put this on one of my client rods this weekend. We're going to drag it around and hopefully we're going to see somebody reel in a couple of two pound, three pound, four pound trout. That will be most exciting. Um, like I say, I'm confident it's going to work. It's going to be fun. Remember, experimentation is the centerpiece of fishing success. It's guys out on the water experimenting with different rigs, different baits, different lures. Those guys are the pioneers. Those guys are the guys that develop tomorrow's fishing tackle, tomorrow's approaches. You know, back in the day here in the, in the, in the California Delta, catching sturgeon was all about shrimp baits and then some guy tried lamprey eel and he revolutionized sturgeon fishing. And then some guy came on his heel and he tried salmon roe and sturgeon fishing was revolutionized again. When you're out on the water, devote a little bit of time to experimentation. Think fishing all the time. Come up with logical applications of gear that isn't ordinarily used or gear that is ordinarily used, but using it in innovative ways and you are gonna be on the cutting edge of sport fishing. If you like this content, please hit that subscribe button. I'm Kel Kellogg. I gotta go to the hardware store now and I'm not experimenting with fishing tackle. I gotta fix my swamp cooler. Um, I'm out of here for now. If you're looking for gear, including FHS grubs, willow leaf dodgers and more, go over to fishhuntshoot.com. You guys stay safe, stay happy, and I will report back um, about the success, about the evolution of my swarm rig. I can't wait to get it wet. I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube, guys. Having a lot of fun this morning.